so we have quite the surprise on the farm we have our good morning and hey everybody you're watching call the corn star if you're even slightly interested in farming or just want to watch a 25 year old farmer get some stuff done you're in the right place and that sun is really bright so today's gonna be one of those days we have a hundred hours worth of work that we need to get done in like five to start off this grain bin is plugged in over the bottom sump so we're gonna get this auger out of the way we got the world's largest vacuum cleaner aka the grain vac on the 7140 right now ah, the classic push behind the wheel So here's the plan. We're gonna take the grain vac right inside of the door. Hopefully that barrel doesn't fall from under me. We're gonna stick it in here and we're gonna get through this layer of little rotten crap that's kind of stuck to the edge walls. We need to get down to the sumps under here. And then there's an auger that runs on the floor. So we need to get down to that auger because once we're able to turn that auger on, then that will be able to run and make its way all the way around the bin and clean that up. It'll break all these chunks of rotten crap. Is the grain vac gonna work? Oh, absolutely, until we start it. <laughs> now the grain vac itself will work good. Make sure these two guys don't hit. This might work. This is where you need a cattle prod. Oh, yo, yo, get in there. Come on. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Once we get a little bit out, we'll be able to open this door real quick. And then my hands smell like rotten beans. The whole bin is good, other than like the three inches that's right along the edge of the wall. That is what's giving us those rotten chunks. So I'm sitting there in front of the grain vac when a rotten chunk comes, you sit there ready to grab it and you toss it out this window into the skid loader and then we're gonna dump that in a compost area. Okay, here's the fun part. We're gonna load some seed up on the old Unver Firth 410 XL Seed Pro. A little tricky getting that up there sometimes. You gotta get it just right. This is where you don't want to get too rambunctious. Hold on, Cole! What are we doing? We're figuring out the best configuration of seed. So our 3-3, we have 45 acres worth of that. So we're gonna put that on your seed tender so you can plant campground with that 3-3. Because okay. so otherwise we're gonna be putting a 3-3 in the same field as a 2-7 which is what we don't want to do, because then there could be a weak difference on when one's ready and one's not. Right, so right. So you don't want to come into the field, get the one that's ready, leave, go to another, and then have to come back. You'd like to be able to do them all at once. That's smart. So, we have quite the surprise on the farm. We have ourselves a 2021 John Deere 410 8R, and then we had a 24 row John Deere planter. We got Gary here from Van Wall. I think that's the other Van Wall guy, the technician who's gonna teach me how to run this thing. So we're gonna we're gonna have an adventure today. Oh, that's just a sharp rig, isn't it? Look at that. Gary's gonna give me the rundown on the John Deere. Cooper's getting the 340 out. He's gotta put diesel in that, then that machine's ready to go plant. We gotta get the pull. I don't know if that's the air conditioning bell or what. That's violent. No air conditioning, Coop. You have to crack the windows. Ruby put the Thunder Creek fuel trailer through its paces today. The deer's about empty. 340's almost completely empty. That's ah. hard. I mean, you know, they they see stuff. They're curious. This one have a refrigerator in it. Right there. Oh, perfect. Is there a microwave? No, that was an option we didn't get this time. Maybe <laughs> on the next one. We're going to start off with leveling the bar. We want this 7x7 seven seven beam to be perfectly level because that determines how the row units get pulled through the ground. Look at that. That looks pretty good. Zach and Gary have been so gracious to help me. We've been out here for like four hours getting everything set up, closing wheels, getting, getting those centered, getting everything leveled. We had to put bean bowls in and then we had to put like this slidey plate thing in for the beans. So now we are ready to go throw some seed in. I went to go stick my USB from all of my boundary maps inside of here and it comes out. I have to get a conversion to go from the Ag Leader system into the John Deere tractor so that way everything measures up. Problem is Pete's a little busy right now so he's gonna have to get on it here later. So we're gonna go to the back of the field. We're just gonna try running some beans so I can learn kind of everything that goes on in here and stuff. And it's, 
I'm, I'm kind of excited. I've never ran a John Deere before other than the one from 1980. And there's one reason why I would like to run this planter or why I am running this when we're trying something. But I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. My favorite thing about John Deere equipment is the fact that it has speed control. So this little dial right here, when I click it forward, I can set my maximum speed right there and it will automatically go to that. So like right now, just look at this. We're just going to crank it up. We're just continually speeding up. Tractor automatically shifts, automatically does its own thing. I can set low speed limits. I can set high speed limits. How fast does this thing go? Go oh, 31, what? No, we're not going that fast. <laughs> Holy cow. Presley, where yet? Oh, there you are. Right there. foot drop there. And then Gary wonders why he's getting a new hip in a month. First day of planting is just like the first day of spraying. You think you're going to get 200 acres done, then you end up getting five. So we're on track to get five. That's the goal, five. Actually, no, our goal is 200, so that way we get five. You dirty dog, we messed it up right off the get-go. <laughs> no! That adds character to that corner. Okay, why are we not getting center rows planting? Let's stop for a second here. We just forgot to take the things out for the vacuums? Yeah. We've been in and out in the cab a ton. It's been just an all-day event. We've planted 21 acres. We've just been trying to make sure all the measurements are correct. So when we come into an area that's already been planted, things shut off when they're supposed to. And then when we get into an area that hasn't been planted yet, things turn on when they're supposed to. We've been learning how to run the tractor. We've been trying to get GPS stuff figured out. We've been just learning little ins and outs of the machine, figuring out why certain things haven't been working. It just all been mechanical things on our end that we didn't have set up right. I need to go back and do a couple more calibrations on this just to make sure some things are set to tolerances that I am holding to as a standard. This planter is a 2005, the bar parts of 2005. So this seven by seven beam up here, all the tanks, the wheels, the cylinders, all that kind of thing. But then it has, I guess they call it a retro kit or as Gary calls it a puck product upgrade kit. And so this whole row unit, everything that attaches to the bar is brand new. And we're actually the first people to put any acres on this at all. So today was the, the break-in period. We literally wore the brand new factory paint off of it for the first time. Welcome to day number two of planting. And it is a hurricane around this corner. They're talking 40 mile an hour winds today. We need to get the back of that seat tender unloaded. We got the rest of the seat in the big machine shed. We need to get that outside. Shut the doors in the big machine shed because the wind's coming from that way. It'll blow right through that building. It'll blow the doors off the other side. Golly, that's plan for today is we're going to try to get all three planters running. Dad's planter has just a little bit of work that needs to be done to it. The John Deere planter has a little bit of work that needs to be done to it. A couple adjustments. Cooper's is ready to go. He just needs seed. Easy. Easy. Don't hit anything. Uh, okay, we're good. We got done at just the right time. Cooper just called, said he just ran out of seed. I think we are completely ready to go with this. This is all good, checked fluids. Uh, the real question is, how in the world do you close this? Where's the handle at? I'm probably looking right at it, but I don't see it. Is it this? This tractor can do 31 miles an hour, but I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of terrifying. John Deere is all filled up. That is completely ready to go. We're going to pull dad's planter inside of here. We're going to figure out what wrenches we need to fit on to get the closing wheels centered. We're going to get the GPS up on top of the cab. We're going to get the monitor inside, get everything hooked up there, pull it outside, unfold it, try to get stuff centered up, try not to blow away. Little black fingers at the 
again trying to make sure they're all centered so right now cole's writing some notes down we may have to get some shims i've been working on centering those closing wheels for like an hour and a half it's starting to get cold it's starting to get dark i need to get the rest of the tabletop outlined while i can still see well in the daylight i have one row row number 13 is just fighting me for whatever reason you go one way it's off one side you turn around you go the other way it's off the other side so i think we just need to get into the field it's actually going to be planting in and one row is a lot better than 16. i just made a miraculous discovery this thing has a massage chair on the bottom and the back look at that those are the knobs coming up it's like the thing you sit in and then it you know it always hurts your back except this one doesn't hurt your back massage chair and a tractor are you kidding me we're cruising along right now doing 3.4 miles an hour this planter can fly but i just really want to focus on doing a good job i really don't care how fast i get done i'm happy with how things are going here so i am renting this tractor and this planter from van wallens for one reason the meter on this planter is a gajillion times better than the one that's on our white planter so with our white planter when we're in corn it only likes a medium round seed and very specific types of medium round seeds if it's like a little bit different of a medium round seed i i don't know i think a medium round is a medium round but the planter knows it because my singulation will go from like a 98 percent singulation to 94 92 89 and if it's anything outside of a medium round it absolutely hates it and i mean having an upper 80s singulation in today's world it's definitely taking some yield away where this planter i have like a 99.6 like right now we're doing 99.7 with soybeans 99.8 look at that a new planter is a really expensive purchase and when you don't really know what you're getting into that's a lot of money to fork out up front so i just wanted to see the difference between the meters we have on our planter and the meters on this what kind of job that does so renting was a, a pretty a, a lot more affordable option to test these things out on our actual operation got the heated seat on i, I better turn my old massager back on again that thing's awesome as i'm sitting here i'm watching nava's new video it's a good video go check it out we've done 42 acres so far this field's about 96 or so by the time it's said and done we're averaging 25 acres an hour right now check this out you can pull this lever right here you can turn this thing turns so far to the side look at that i just need a bigger foot peg so i put both feet on it at the same time so i cross my feet this planter despite being green actually has a lot of commonalities between our white planter the first one being the row cleaners i believe these are yetter shark tooth air just row cleaners they're just john deere branded but they're made by yetter and then our closing wheels are yetter twister closing wheels and that is what we have on our white planter and that's what's on this really the only major difference between our planter and this planter is solely the meter this one is definitely heavier built than ours the pivot point on these things are tanks row 16 says it's not planting it's got brought tractor supper looks like maybe a chicken noodle soup of some sort maybe with some mashed potatoes or something in there then we got brownies we 40 acres to go we're gonna be having to fill up here at the center of my hood lined up right on top of that row that makes it where we're planting right between the rows and we're avoiding all the root balls which is exactly what we want row cleaners are doing a really nice job of getting that residue out of the way no, i'm happy with how this is looking thing just popped up on me here a second ago saying my seed two bin was getting low on seed we are a thousand feet from the end right now once we get there we'll pull up to the shiny lights we got seed tinder waiting for us what time is it 11 50. it's about midnight it's gotten interesting right here is where we used the corn head last fall that did not have the devastators on it and then right next to where we are right there is where we used our corn head that does have devastators it, night and day difference oh boy we gotta go into the freezer never mind see tinder ran out of fuel not gonna lie the gas thing's a little annoying just because i wanted to get that field done tonight but we got dad going today 
Cooper got 250 acres done. We got like 50 something. So we still had a 300 acre day. Solid day. Tomorrow we're going to be running on cylinders. But that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>